good evening everyone we are here once again <clears throat> uh, as didi ma'am has already oriented us about uh, the e content evaluation and in detail we will discuss in this session also so why e content what is e content and why there is a need of evaluating e content that we will discuss today and uh, also till now you all are familiar with the types of e content which indu ma'am has discussed in the very first session on the first day of this uh, srg training also uh, she has discussed the types of uh, e content formats of e content and you have also uh, oriented till now about uh, regarding the development of e content whether it is uh, audio resources or video resources or the graphic resources or any other resources uh, we have uh, kept the session of all these types of uh, resource development uh, during this uh, during our srg training so as you are aware of uh, the development of e content now you all are expert uh, i i am saying expert because already uh, you are in the process of developing some type of e content because in the last session you have told me that uh, you have uh, you have developed some content uh, uh, while using canva and other applications also so you have already developed a type of content and maybe some of you are uh, have uploaded some uh, type of content on diksha also so that's why i am calling you the expert uh, we have oriented you about the development of content but development of content is not enough we have also take care some parameters uh, on e of e content evaluation why this uh, is this e content correct is this e content still needed is this uh, is there any requirement of this e content is my content relevant there are some questions uh, on which we have to think about so uh, we will discuss all these thing all these things in this session now i am going to share my ppt with you so i hope the ppt is visible to you so as we are discussing the need of e content evaluation first of all i want to uh, know uh what are the various formats of e content so you can write your answer in the chat box the various formats of e content we all know there are multiple types of uh, uh, resources there are multiple type of content but in which format we develop those contents you can write in the chat box okay uh, mr praveen has shared a link of interactive content which uh, i think he has created and uploaded on diksha okay video content audio text video content images infographic videos okay okay animation magazines script writing a script writing is an art okay okay yes i have also i'm also reading your responses here uh, so as we can see why there is a need of e content evaluation because till now we have uh, we know how to create the e content but how to evaluate we will see why we have to focus on these three points which the three pointers uh, we have shared in this slide 
for e content evaluation why there is a need of e content uh, evaluation first of all uh we should know what do we understand by e content which need to be evaluated first of all we should know the content which we are creating as i have already said that the we should con uh, create a content which is needed by the uh, audience uh, we should also know the type of audience for which we are creating the e content uh, so we should understand what is the type of e content and why it is to be evaluated the second thing is why these e content need to be evaluated why there is uh, a need arises to be uh, for the evaluator of these uh, the type of e content and how these they should be evaluated so thirdly uh, we will also know the process or the methods of e content evaluation so in this slide you will see the type of content which needs to be evaluated until now i hope that you all have uh, uh, learned the development of these type of e content so uh, in this slide uh, we have shown various type of e content which need to be evaluated there is uh, uh, a content uh, audio based content there is video based content there are simulations uh, may i know uh, do you understand by this term simulation and there is animation also we have a session on uh, creation of animation uh, tomorrow i think and uh, uh, we have also learned uh, during this srg the development of interactives i think it, it was in today's session session and uh, ebook is also another type of content the immersive content we just had a session on immersive content that is augmented reality and virtual reality also create creating energized textbooks is also a type of uh, e content but why uh, are we calling these uh, the uh, books as energized why we are calling the books um, energized and uh, uh, what do you understand by this term energized books or yeah, energized text books we will share the attendance link after this session yes please tell uh we are we have written here a term energized stage books what is it what are the energized stage books or what are the energized books it will be read out uh, read out the content content with digital lessons uh textbook embedded with the ce content means ce means uh in the form of qr code okay include qr code yes so energized text books are right yes uh, chitra ma'am ma has said that it is with qr code so the energized text books has, has a qr code which is linked with multiple type of resources so if the user scans the qr code <clears throat> embedded and in, in that particular text books the user can also access all the resources linked with that qr code which is there on the textbook uh, and that is why we we call those textbooks energized textbooks because those textbooks are energized with multiple types of resources the second and uh, next type of content is the presentations so the ppts you are cre you create uh, in the last session also uh, we have discussed how we can create online presentations so presentation is also a type of e content then the database the e journals are also a type of content and all these type of content which we have mentioned in this slides needs to be evaluated so uh, you can read the other type of content also and uh, if you find any difficulty in understanding any type of content you can write in the chat box we can discuss it later so all these types of content or whatever content you are created it needs to be evaluated it needs to be uh, because if you are a creator of a content uh, you uh, would uh, like to share that the content with your audience with a good quality so uh, always if the content has a good quality you would like to share with the audience you don't want to share any low quality content with the uh, with your audience so that's why we need to evaluate any content so 
we are discussing the need of uh, e content evaluation so uh, if we are we have created any content then first of all we have to check its reliability and validity these are very common terms which we use in our normal uh, daily life so if i ask you what is the meaning of or what do you understand by this uh, term reliability and validity so you can please tell in the chat box your responses a content whatever content you are creating should be reliable and valid it should be cost effective which means there uh, should not be a uh, use of lots of money you cannot you don't want to invest a lots of money in creating a particular type of content it should be very cost effective you should uh, uh, you will prefer as in the last session also you are uh, you were asking that the, is the particular application the, the application we were discussing uh, is an oer or not so we would prefer to use the, the platform or the application which is uh, freely available so we should also uh, uh, you should also take care of this factor that is uh, the e content should be cost effective which we are creating so uh, and the e content also appropriate as per the nature of content and the method of teaching so the content which you are creating should be appropriate as per your method of teaching you are familiar with the different methods of teaching because you are the teacher and uh, you know there are many types of methods which we use in our uh, teaching learning processes so the content which we are using should app should be appropriate as per our teaching methods and also we should also take, uh, take we should also take care of the technology which is available at that time can you give an example of this we are discussing here uh, some factors which uh, we need to be take care of yes accuracy uh easy evaluation uh, what do you understand by easy evaluation and if you are creating uh, any e content then how you can create a cost effective e content yes keep on writing i'm checking the responses ha uh, we should also take care of the uh, copyright issues Uh, clarity of content simple and understandable language okay okay relativeness now let's discuss the process or the method of evaluation <laughs> so here uh, we are showing here in this slide you can see there are some quality parameters of e content which shows the process and method of evaluation so first of all we have to take care of the target audience for which we are creating the content so uh, if we are uh, taking care of this factor the target audience we should take care of the age group the previous knowledge of the uh, previous knowledge of our uh, target audience the social and cultural background the learning styles the language they are comfortable in the demographic information the emotional development ability level social development etc so the target audience is a very uh, important parameter of creating any uh, e content and its evaluation the next one is the content itself so if you are creating any content the content should be accurate enough it should be relevant it should cover the content uh, as a whole uh, so we can say the content co cover should be there the update the content should be updated and aligned with curricul curriculum 
it should be special uh, it should have a special uh, contiguity and uh, the temporal contiguity <clears throat> scope and depth appropriateness the target audience for which you are creating the content the level of difficulty so all these things we have to take care uh, while we are creating any content and while we are evaluating the content so as a reviewer or as a subject expert if someone uh, uh, gives you any content for evaluation you have to take care of all these factors then the another quality parameter of e content is the pedagogical consideration so under pedagogical consideration you will see that we have to see uh, the objectives uh, of the content uh, for which the uh, the content is uh, has been cre uh, created so first of all you should take of care of the objectives the method of delivering content media selection media selection means whatever media you are using uh, whether it is audio or video or some other media you are using uh, in your e content for uh, in, in your e content creation uh, you should take care of whether uh, it is suitable in your pedagogy or not and uh, you all should also take care of the presentation format <clears throat> the content should be free from bias con contextual uh, contextual to local needs scope of interactions as you can see there are uh, many parameters given under this particular uh, one parameter uh, that is pedagogical consideration similarly uh, the presentation part uh, you should take care of the aesthetics, literally and social values, motivation, innovative and creative, uh, creativity, universal design of learning, and etc. As you can see, the process and method uh, of part, there are several steps which uh, we have to take care while we, as an expert, creating or evaluating the e-content. And these are the quality parameters. So if uh, there are some technical features also, just a minute, please. Yes. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, now uh, we have discussed in the previous slide the process and methods and the parameters on which we can uh, evaluate the e-content. Uh, now we will discuss how it should be evaluated. And in uh, here we uh, I am going to show our e-content evaluation tool. Uh, this tool is available on uh, CIT and CRT's website also. You can access that this e-content evaluation tool. And one of the main feature of this evaluation tool is that this uh, evaluation tool is uh, uh, reliable and valid also. So after uh, an intense research, this tool has been developed. So this tool, uh, there are three parts of this tool. The first part contains the parameters. Let's check this tool. Yes, so in this tool, you can see there are uh, several parameters with its explanation. So the first column uh, uh, has the parameters, the second uh, column has the responses, and uh, the third column has the remarks or the rating. So this tool uh, has been used by the reviewers, the content reviewers, and the subject experts and if uh, while evaluating the e-content. Because uh, we, uh, the CIT receives many e-content from uh, other agencies also. And uh, we always evaluate that e-content before uploading on any uh, platform, uh, any of our platform. 
So first parameter is of, as you can see, is factual accuracy. I'm just maximizing the screen because I think it is very small for you to see. Yes. So the first one is a uh, factual accuracy and under factual <coughs> accuracy, the reader has to see whether the content being presented through text, diagram, pictures, map, data, audio, video, animation, simulation have no factual errors. The content which has been shared with us or the content which we are creating or we have created should have the factual accuracy. And this is the explanation of factual accuracy, what factual accuracy is. So if the content is factually accurate, then uh, the response should be uh, yes. And if it is not, then the response should be no. But if the reviewer or the expert has any remark or any rating, the uh, expert can write his or her uh, remarks in the third column. The next parameter, the second parameter is legal use of proprietary content. And under this parameter, the explanation says that the content piece should not use proprietary content, which is unauthorized. So <clears throat> the content which has been created should not use any proprietary content, which is unauthorized. The reviewer or the expert has to ensure this thing. Uh, yes. So uh, the next column, you can see the yes and no. Uh, yes means that the content legally uses uh, proprietary content or doesn't use any proprietary content at all. And the explanation of no is also given in the second column. Then the third one is content piece free from technical glitch. So the reviewer or the expert has also to ensure that the content piece which has been shared or which has been developed by us uh, should be free from any technical glitch. And then technical glitch means that uh, sound is in sync with visuals. There is a uh, general usability in terms of rendering and uh, visual experiences. Again, the expert has to mark yes and no. The third, the fourth one is <coughs> constitutional and statutory appropriateness of content. So the explanation says, you can see, here on the screen that the content does not reflect violation of constitutional obligation. For example, adhering to fundamental rights and duties should not promote stereotype or derogatory depiction based on caste, class, gender, community, ethnic group, religion, etc. So the content, <clears throat> while evaluating the content, the expert should also check whether the content should be constitutionally and statutory appropriate. Again, there is yes and no column. Then the next one is correspondence with topic, subtopic covered in the textbook. The content should be relevant with, with the textbook. We should not create any such content which is not relevant with the, uh, with the textbook or we should not be relevant uh, with any topic of the textbooks. So in this parameter, you can see the expert has to rate the content. And uh, the expert has to rate from uh, 1 to 5. The uh, 1 is excellent and 5th is very poor. So uh, the explanation says the relevance of the content piece with the topic, subtopic mentioned in the textbook. Then the next one, it is a very detailed evaluation tool. If you see it, you, if, uh, you can download this uh, evaluation tool from the CIT website also. The six parameter says pedagogic and andragogic structure. And the suggestive criteria, but not, not an exhaustive. It is mentioned here, it, these uh, the following, the given, uh, the criteria given under this um, uh, parameter is only suggestive, but not the exhaustive list provided here. So you can see, The sub points. <clears throat> yes.
yes if we are creating any content which is relevant to the textbook then we should also take care of the pedagogy or the andragogy so i hope you know the difference between pedagogy and andragogy if not you can write here in the chat chat books uh, chat box so the uh, <clears throat> pedagogy is an art of teaching which is used to teach the children and andragogy is an art of teaching which is used to teach the adult learners yes the art of teaching to adult learners is known as andragogy and the art of teaching to young learners is the pedagogy so whether the content presentation is supported by relevant examples the expert should also take care of this the content piece is learning outcome uh, learning outcome oriented cause and effect relationship is used to explain various phenomena Con, uh, concrete to abstract the format should be con, uh, format of the e content should be concrete to abstract the content piece attempts to initiate reflective thinking among learners the content piece attempts to integrate with the other domain of knowledge content piece prescribes to the following maxim of teaching and learning the content piece should go from easy to difficult simple to complex and there are other criteria also <clears throat> the next criteria is of language and comprehensibility as you have already uh, one of uh, you have said that language should be simple the same criteria we have mentioned here also that the content should have no grammatical errors uh, the content is presented in a manner which is understandable as per the grade level grade or the level of the learner here again the expert has to rate the content Six point six and six point one two. Okay, uh, you. I will share the presentation with you, sir, in the group, and uh, you can find the tool there. The link of the tool there. You can download the tool also. <coughs> the eight parameters that is format of content presentation. What should be the format of content presentation? The content has been presented in a format that is best suited for the theme. The theme for which you are creating uh, the content. it should be best suited to that particular content for instance here one example has also been given here a content which is in the form of a group discussion would score low on uh, this criteria if the best way to explain the concept would have been an experiment yes so <clears throat> uh, for example you are creating a content uh, for a particular subject you should use the format which is appropriate for that particular content uh, again the expert has to given has to give the rating here for point number 8 the point number 9 says pace of pace of the program which means the content is appropriately paced leading to ease of comprehension for example you are creating any audio content <clears throat> or you are evaluating the audio based content or the video based content the uh, pace of the program uh, should be as per the ease of the comprehension the pace should be like that that the audience should comprehend the content it should be it should not be very fast or it should not be very slow again uh, rating has to be uh, given here for this criteria and the last one is duration of the program so if the duration of the program is too long the audience will get uh, bored uh, while seeing that uh, program or while listening to a uh, to an any audio content so uh, the content creator should take care of the duration of the program the content is of appropriate duration to sustain attention of the learner as uh, you all know that uh, the attention span of any human is not very long we can listen to someone for few minutes or uh, yes uh, i know your attention space is uh, your, your attention span is very good so uh, but we are creating content if we are creating content for small children 
then we should take care of the duration of the program. Again, rating should be given here. And lastly, you can see the notes for content creation administrator. Here are some notes given. Uh, there are four points for the content crea uh, curation administrator. So here is the whole tool. I am scrolling it once again. Now let's go to the slide again. Let's see the evaluation tool. This tool is for the reviewers and it is it contains only the parameters. The content reviewer uh, can review the content while keeping in view the criteria which we have just discussed, the detailed criteria, and he or she can mark or give the rating in this format, this, uh, this brief tool. So the next one is, yes. I hope you all have seen our e-content uh, evaluation guidelines. E So NCRT has also developed a guideline for um, the development of e-content. Uh, you can find the, those guidelines uh, on our website only. And in that, in those guidelines, in that booklet, you will find this type of tool. And in this tool, we have given a tool, an assessment tool for digital content especially for audio content as you can see in the heading assessment tool for digital content audio there are some criteria given here with the rating of poor to excellent and it has different parameters the overall grading uh, has also been given here then we have also included the assessment of video video content this all you can find in our guidelines that is on e content development then the third one is the assessment tool for digital content multimedia okay i am expanding this Now it is visible. These are the parameters for evaluating the multimedia content. So you can find assessment tool for audio, video and multimedia uh, in the development of e-content guidelines. I'm also showing you the guidelines here. NCRT has developed many, uh, many guidelines and a few uh, we have uh, shown here that is uh, for e-content only, especially there is a guideline for the development of e-content for children with disabilities and the guideline which I am talking about, that is guideline for development of e-content for a school and teacher education and teacher education, Diksha. So this is these are the cover page of those guidelines, and you can find this parameter which uh, we have just discussed uh, for e-content evaluation for video, ED, uh, audio, and multimedia uh, in this uh, guideline book. That is guideline for development of e-content.
Yes. So evaluation is an intrinsic component for creation process, and here a picture of AD model has been given. So, uh, in the very first session of today, uh, taken by Dr. Ajita Deshmukh, she has discussed this AD model in the morning with you. So, can we recap this model here? Can you tell me about this AD model? What is AD model? You can write in the chat box. What is this ADI model? Okay. Plan, design, implement, evaluate. What? <coughs> Someone else? Steps to develop content include instructional design, design plan, analysis followed by design instruction. Okay. Okay. This is the full form. Okay. Analyze. Okay. So, at this model says. <coughs> That if we want to develop any e content, we have to analyze. Analyze what? Analyze the need of e content. So, uh, if we want to uh, develop any e content, first we have to know the need of the that e content among the audience. On uh, to check the need, we have to analyze. Then we can design how the e content should be developed. After that, the development part comes. The evalu uh, the developer should uh, can develop the e-content and implement the e-content among the audience. But if the content is okay, then uh, the developer can proceed. But the if uh, if the e-content is not okay, if there is any glitch or if there is any a lack in the content, the developer can modify the content and again analyze the need, again design, redesign it, again redevelop, redevelop it and re-implement it. So the cycle goes on till the content is perfect. The, and uh, this perfection comes after evaluation. So <clears throat> I have just discussed the definition of this model in a very uh, few words. Uh, in the pre uh, in the first session, ma'am has explained this uh, model in detail. So till now, if you have any question, you can ask. We can take the questions based on this session. So for the PPT, I will share you uh, share with you the PPT. Now I'll share with the coordinators. So you can share in the WhatsApp group, and um, you can download that evaluation tool from the website or uh, from the link given in the PPT. And uh, if you have any question, you can ask. Uh, I think we already had a session on copyright and licensing. <coughs> For offline training, you have to reach us through email. 
the official email. Ha, you can you can analyze the question on your own uh, with the help of this e content evaluation tool. The evaluator can be any subject expert. Teachers can be evaluators, yes. If you are not in the SRG group, then how you have joined this meeting, Rupa ma'am? If you are not in the SRG group, then how did you get this link? So Nidhi ma'am, I think there is no more question from them. So the session is to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. First of all, I would like to um, thank Dr. Gulshan Mufi because we have got to know that what all criteria, what all parameters are there which we need to take